you're watching to the point. For the last four days, the Sadhvi Niranjan Jyoti controversy has captured the headlines. Is the government right in refusing opposition demands for her resignation or sacking? Is the opposition right in its criticism of the Prime Minister? Tonight, I shall put those questions to one of the government's most senior ministers, the Environment Minister, Prakash Javdekar. Mr. Javdekar, let's start with the Sadhvi Niranjan Jyoti controversy. Given that her apology was not heartfelt and it wasn't sincere, A, because it was made under pressure from Mr. Venkai Naidu and the Prime Minister, and B, because just hours before that, she had actually defended what she said, why should this insincere and forced apology be considered the end of the matter? No, this is just yet another uh, injustice to Sadhvi. Because I am part of the whole process where I know for certain that she came on her own and she said that she is so much disturbed and she feels so sorry and how she, she wants to come out of it because she wants to express regrets. In which case, why did she so to A and I just it. that morning defend what she said? She gave an interview to A and I defending what? her words that very morning. Why did she do that if she actually felt she had made a mistake? See, she can't have both positions. No, because that was a mistake. Who said that was not a mistake? Karan, don't be that. See, Maut Ka Saudagar, nobody said it was a mistake. But she was the first, we said the first, even Prime Minister said first that this is a mistake. So you're saying you she made us. two mistakes? Absolutely. You're saying she made two mistakes. The first no. mistake was the speech the night before. She, the second mistake was the interview to ANI defending the speech. She made two mistakes. See, no, everybody expresses the way they have been doing it for years together. When somebody, she came, you know she is from not only most backward community, in an entirely different field she was working and she has come to this limelight. She never demanded that she should be made minister. Mr. Javdekar. She is minister. She is doing Mr. her Javdekar, job responsibly. You can't excuse her comment on the grounds she comes from a backward community. Backward people don't go around calling people Haram Zado. Those were the words she used. No, You're but insulting you, backward people no, when you excuse it I'm on asking. those grounds. You, you excused Mayawati on the very same pretext. I didn't On many you. occasions. You, you can't be double... Uh, but the point I first make to you is this. The night after she made the Haram Zadon comment, she gave an interview to ANI the next morning standing by what she said. How then can you say her apology is genuine if she was defending it a couple of hours earlier? I'll tell you. What she was defending, that is also what you are saying is not correct fully. Because what she was saying that she never meant uh, that this is communal. She had nothing communal in her mind when she said this. This was just an exercise of alliteration. If this explanation somebody gives, will you say that she was defending? You really mean that this was an exercise of alliteration? Are you really serious about that? No, because people do. And I have seen many, many big, big leaders also committing mistake in when they love the alliteration to an extent that they forget sometimes logic. All right. I have seen from all, many parties. You're saying that she got carried away with her rhetoric. She said more than she intended to say. Therefore, it was a mistake. Let me give you three good reasons why Sadhvi Niranjan Jyoti's apology cannot suffice. First, Monday was not the first time she's made this Haram Zadon comment. The Navbharat Times says that in March, at a rally in Lucknow, where the Prime Minister was due to speak, she made the same comment with the same words. And it's even possible the Prime Minister was sitting on the dais listening to her. She is therefore a serial offender and uh, she needs to be punished, otherwise she will continue to repeat this mistake. This is absolutely, again I said, your bias is very clear when you say deliberate. Have you met her? I think you should meet her. I'll tell you why I say then deliberate. Then you will know. I'll tell you why I say deliberate. No, because, because as I told you, the Navbharat Times says that in Lucknow at a rally, she made the same comment with the same words. A slip of the tongue can happen once. You can get carried away with alliteration on one occasion, but you can't do it repeatedly unless you're doing it deliberately. That's why I say 
She's a no. serial offender. That's, That's why I she say. needs to be punished. People, people fall prey to that rhetoric, which gets them claps or gets them appreciation, or see, one sees that oh, it's a good sentence. So people use it many times without thinking to the full extent which everybody should do, and that is why you should actually congratulate Narendra Modi, who himself in our meeting on Tuesday of the MPs, he first brought out the topic and forgive said me. that this forgive kind me. of I must step in and correct you, Minister. should not happen. It's and Rajiv Pratap yeah. Rudi has made it clear that at that meeting on Tuesday, the Prime Minister did not speak about the Sadhvi by name. He made a general comment about how MPs must not address the nation. He spoke much, uh, indirectly no, no, and obliquely, not directly see. and specifically. No, no. You can't claim credit for specifically no. admonishing the Sadhvi because he didn't do that. Me. I tell you, because he doesn't name, but he said it specifically and he reiterated it in the House. Can I See, tell you, can I tell you why the Prime Minister needs to minute. be more outspoken? Congress is without the issues. But you are not without agenda, you are not without issues. You can talk about so many issues. I'll tell you why this Akaran, issue is you important. Can really I'll tell you why this issue this is, is important. No, is and I'll tell you why it's important to the Prime Minister. In his Independence mm. Day speech, which people applauded, the Prime Minister called for a 10 year moratorium on communal and caste violence. Now, presumably, he meant not just physical violence, that, that he meant verbal yeah, violence as well. The Sadhavi in her speech has breached that moratorium. Therefore, she's put into question the credibility of the moratorium the Prime Minister asked for. That's another reason for saying to her, step aside. No, but this is, this is not the way I let me tell you. The Congress ministers who were under scan were in corruption and they didn't resign till court threw, threw them out. The issue here is not the corruption. Issue is here is not the moral turpitude. It's an falling prey to a popular gimmickry or say rhetoric, Mr. which is absolutely bad. Have you bad. forgotten that you and are a that party is what, with a difference? That is what we have said Mr. Azwani used to claim that badge with such pride. We are a party with a difference, and that difference was moral <coughs> superiority. Now you are justifying the Sadhvi no, on the grounds that Congress is no better. So where's no, the difference gone? Suddenly justified. you're on level with them. I'm not just, no, 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 I'm saying differently. The way we were reacting to them and the way we, you want to react to this incident is different scale. That no, is what I'm pointing Not at all. Out. I'll tell you a third, if not fourth reason why the Sadhvi needs to either resign or be sacked. She's accused of breaching section 153A of the Indian Penal Code by promoting enmity between <coughs> groups. <coughs> Arguably, that is in fact a breach of the Indian constitution. Now, when the Sadhavi became a minister, she took an oath to protect that constitution. So surely now, this matter needs to be cleared up and investigated. And in the interim, she must step aside. You can't have a minister who took an oath to protect the constitution now being accused of breaching the same constitution. And that's another reason she should step aside. No. No, I don't agree with you. And on every issue, we need not agree. Let me tell you very clearly that Congress has lost the plot. They have not only lost election, but they have lost the will to even fight on right issues. They can raise right issues, there is a place. But since there is no issue, Lok Sabha was functioning normally because there we have the majority. Here in Rajya Sabha, they have upper hand. Min as far as numbers Minister, is Minister, come back so to the Sadhvi. This is an important issue. Block Rajya Sabha. Let me. Well, you gave them the opportunity to block the Rajya Sabha. Let me put this to you. So when, the, when the Sadhvi, when the Sadhvi said that those who don't vote for the BJP are haram zado, she was talking about something like 69 percent of India. Only 31 percent voted for you in the national no. elections. Is she really claiming, and no. are you standing by the claim that 69% of the country, because they don't vote for BJP, are haram zadon? Those were her words. And that's what you're defending no. when you say she mustn't resign. See, no, one minute. See, Karan, this is the difference comes because I don't know whether you have stayed in rural areas or not. I have lived through in villages only. From my first standard to 10th standard, I was in Jilla Parishal school. So, how people say, 
this connotation has no communal connotation when people say it for in within their families within their community within their gali say this should be this is bad this should be avoided that is my sense always tells me and that is why okay. we never say so the Let issue me. is the issue is that we must take things in proportionate you know we must think can I in, can I put this to you? I want to I, I want to sum up this discussion about the Sadri and then move to other things. But yes. I want to first put this to you. I've given you four reasons why her apology doesn't suffice. The first was that this is not the first time she's made this mistake, as you call it. She said the same thing in March at a rally in Lucknow. She used the same word Haram Zado. That you disregard. I put it to you that she's damaging good governance and the promise of transparency that you disregard. I put it to you that she's breaching section 153A of the Indian Penal Code that you disregard. I put it to you that she's making a mockery of the Prime Minister's Independence Day call for a moratorium on violence that you disregard. <coughs> there are four good reasons and you disregard them all. No. There are four good reasons as you are preaching, but I don't because three things. One, because yes, Prime Minister's the very 15th August uh, speech and its tenor, tone and tenor is breached. Yes, we accepted it and that is why we condemned it. We said it is unacceptable and that is why she also felt like that and she uh, uh, asked apology. She has not said that withdraw the FIR. She is ready to face the law and everybody will have to. So there is nothing remains now. All right. Let me put this to you. The issue now is the problem in the Rajya Sabha which is paralyzed. It's been paralyzed for four days. If you're not prepared to accept the demand for a resignation, if you're not prepared to sack her, why do you have a problem with the suggestion from <coughs> the combined opposition for a resolution condemning hate speech without naming the Sadhvi and without naming <coughs> anyone else. Why do you have a problem with a general resolution Karan, condemning hate speech? Yeah, good question, Karan. Because that give, give me, gives me opportunity to really what has happened behind and what has happened up front. The thing was that all opposition parties were demanding for first three days that here Prime Minister should come and he should express unhappiness, condemn and then regret. He did it to their demand and because he always felt like that. But when he said now they are upping their ante and demanding something else. If you pass resolution, they will say something more different. So you can't go on like this. Just a moment. They what you're saying to, to me, what you're saying to me, Minister, go. is very important. You're actually suggesting that the reason you have not agreed to this demand from the opposition for a resolution is because you don't trust them that the resolution will be the end of the matter. You think after you agree to the resolution, they'll make a further demand. So what you're saying is you don't trust the opposition to keep their word. That's what you're saying. No, I just said as a member of Rajya Sabha, because now I am not Parliamentary Affairs Minister. So Parliamentary Affairs Ministers know very well what are the nitty gritties. But the issue is here very simple. As a member of Rajya Sabha, I always feel that what Congress and others were demanding, now they have changed that midway. And now after Prime Minister's explanation, they are demanding more. If many people feel that if you do that, they will still demand more you know, because they, if somebody wants to play politics out of it, let they, they you know, you may be You may that. be theoretically right that this is just the first demand. If you give in to this demand, they'll demand more. On the other hand, if you don't give in to this demand, and at the moment you've refused it, the house will not function on Monday. Your critical legislation like the insurance bill, the so? coal block ordinance and the GST will not get passed because the opposition are saying so. That's why no, I'm saying so. No, I don't so. think so. No, but I don't think so because I believe in collective wisdom and I hope that this Saturday Sunday will collective wisdom will prevail on Congress and others and there will be a smooth functioning on Monday. Let me put this to you. Many people ask a question about the Prime Minister's attitude to the Sadhvi and they ask this. Why is the Prime Minister protecting the Sadhvi rather than 
A, upholding the principles he claims he stands for and B, defending the image of his government. The Sadhavi's protection has become more important than protecting either the image of the government or protecting his principles. Why is he doing that? Aripaba, you are protesting too much and those aggrieved sections as we perceive and those who think in terms of communal politics, people are, people are peaceful, there is no tension brewing and why we want to raise the temperature? You would raise the temperature if you took action against Sadhvi? Are you suggesting that somehow there would be supporters no, of the Sadhvi, Hindu people presumably who would get angry? Is that what you are saying? No. I am, I am saying that we are raising the temperature by unnecessarily discussing at length. Well, you may think the Sadhvi is an unnecessary problem. Others think it's a yeah, very important problem. Yeah, but that's my problem. opinion. All right. My last yeah. question on the Sadhvi. Is there any sense in which Mr. Modi is beholden to the Sadhvi, why he can't act against her? Is there any sense in which he is beholden to people supporting her, why he can't act against her? Because people can't understand why is the Prime Minister sacrificing the image of his government, the possibility of legislation being passed, permitting the Hangama in Rajya Sabha to continue, all because he wants to protect the Sadhvi. Why? No. What he did actually was reprimanding publicly. And I think that is the punishment. All right. Let's then come you don't to us. more. Let's then come, Minister, to another subject highlighted by the Sadhvi episode. And I'm talking this time of Mr. Modi's treatment of the Rajya Sabha. Yesterday was the first time in this session that the Prime Minister came to the upper house. In the last session, the monsoon session, I'm told he was barely there three or four times. To many people, this looks like deliberate disregard of the upper house. No. This is, this is uh, adocious and this is not correct because very simple fact, he came from Nepal, immediately went to Jammu Kashmir and Jharkhand for the first two phases. Now last two, three days he was here, now he is again into campaign and he will continue for 10 days uh, in campaign. Mm -hmm. In both the states. I'll tell you so why your answer doesn't there, work. So I'll tell you why your answer doesn't work. What? I'll tell you why your answer doesn't work. Yesterday, Anand Sharma, the deputy leader me. of the opposition in the Rajya Sabha, said that for two days the Rajya Sabha was paralyzed because members were demanding that Mr. Modi come and make a statement about the Sadhvi. Mr. Modi was present on the premises of parliament but refused to come to the Rajya Sabha, even though the majority of the Rajya Sabha membership came, was asking for him to come. And the question is why? When he's present absolutely, on... Absolutely, you have come to a right point. Because this exposes Anand Sharma thoroughly and the Congress thoroughly. Because they were saying that two days have happened, we are demanding only Prime Minister should come and explain. He came, he explained. He didn't come, said, he came the next enough. day. This is absolutely... He came the next day. Came. Why did he not come for the first two days when he so was so on what? the... He was in the premises. No, he was in his this? office in Parliament. It is not there. And Baba, Parliament is not where they will just make a demand and immediately everybody Mr. is rushing. Mr. That won't happen. Mr. Javdekar, have you forgotten the grand gesture the Prime Minister made when he entered Parliament for the first time as an MP? He knelt down and kissed the floor. He called Parliament the Correct. temple of democracy. Now, when a majority of the members, behaving. now when a majority of the members of the Rajya Sabha ask him to come and he refuses repeatedly to go, it makes people think that that act of reverence may have been hypocritical. On what issue? Is it the issue which is really burning and is it uh, firing on the or any other uh, Maoist attack or a real security threat and some problem? No. They want, they are indulging into worse kind of communal politics. Well, 70% of uh, India had allegedly been called Haram Zadeh by the Sadhvi and that's why Rajya Sabha was worked up and angry and the Prime Minister didn't think it was sufficient to go into the house, even though he believes it's the temple of democracy and the contradiction in his stand is what I'm talking about. You don't no, think it it's not contradictory. contradiction. This is the honesty. This is the honesty of the Prime Minister in his thoughts, action and he is never, uh, he, he is never hypocrite let me and then, he believes and he does what he believes. Let me then put to you a bigger point the opposition makes about the Prime Minister. They say even when he is present in the Lok Sabha, 
Mr. Modi is silent. They say he's made more speeches in foreign parliaments than he's made in his own parliament. How do you respond to that? No, this is absolutely again, when Prime Minister made two speeches while replying to the President's address and the whole discussion, he, he without any reference, he spoke his heart and that stirred that the nation's conscience. That was as far back as he July. He through one That minute. was as far back no, as but July. that's what I'm telling. But Six one months minute, have passed. After that also, he has made interventions when needed, but when the team of the ministers is doing good, it is not a case of Manmohan Singh where half the ministers were not listening to him. Can I put this to you? How is it that the Prime Minister has so much to say eh? outside Parliament and so little to say inside it? This is a Prime Minister bad, who bad. is a great communicator. He's always talking outside Parliament. Yeah. Why is he unable to talk inside Parliament? Why is he silent inside Parliament? No, he is not unable. He speaks when it is needed. But how come he doesn't think it's needed at the moment? Surely there are so many critical issues. You on can't which decide he be what. You can't, Karan. You can't decide what is needed for Prime Minister to intervene. No, of course I can't. But I can point Let, out. At I least can you point will give that. Strange you will give paradox. Him. I can't decide when the Prime Minister. You will speaks, give that freedom to him. I can point out a paradox. People say it as a joke today, but they also want to know why is he imitating Dr. Manmohan Singh's silence. Once upon a time, the Prime Minister used to call Dr. Manmohan Singh Man Mon Mohan Singh because he was silent. Now, people will begin to talk about Mon Narendra Modi because Narendra Modi, like Manmohan Singh, is silent. Why is he imitating the worst of Manmohan Singh? Is that, is that, no, I don't think he's silent. He's speaking out every day. On the other hand, now Congress are saying that how to reply because he's. Uh, and many columnists are writing that it is difficult to follow him because he goes uh, so many places. Right. He is so energetic. Clearly, the minister has a different set of priorities to mind. I'll leave you there, minister. Thank you very much for speaking.